very quiet when I found out. When bad things happen, you're often quiet. This is something to remember for life. If somebody's sitting there explaining how bad their life is or how bad they feel or how bad something's happened and they're blabbering away, they feel fine. They just want it. It affected my life because I felt like my days of learning were over and then it was my time to teach. It's, it's a it's a instant shift in mentality because while my father was alive, I obeyed everything I was told. And then he died and it's like, okay, well now there's no one else left to obey or anyone else I'll respect on that level. I had my fight coach who I always respected and I will respect at the end of my life. but. There's just a shift in mentality from student to teacher. And there you feel a lot more responsible for things. You grow up in a lot of ways. And uh, it's a natural progression of life. There's the only alternative to losing your parents is for them to lose you, which I think would be worse. If my father was still alive, I wouldn't be half the man I am today. But this is how life's supposed to go. And I hope my sons will one day say the same thing about me. And he gets to live forever because I'm so fantastic. That's the greatest thing about having a son. That's the whole point of having a son. Yeah. It used to be Andrew, son of. You were the representation to the name. So my father will be discussed into eternity because I am being discussed. And hopefully my son is so fantastic that I am discussed into eternity. So when you have a son, you want him to be such an exceptional individual. People want to listen to him speak so you can live forever. That's the point of having a son in the first place. I don't know why some people have children and you, they say, I just want my children to be happy. It's great. They can be nobodies, but I want my children to be important. Mm. And how ha it's not just about happiness. Life's not just about happiness. They have duty and honor and they have important things they must do. And they have things they must do even if it doesn't make them happy because they're supposed to do it. And I'm going to raise a lineage of super soldiers and the name Tate will echo into eternity, pissing the Matrix off. And they're going to be my offspring and they have a duty and they don't get to just be happy. They have work to do. Mm. So, um, yeah. I reacted to my father's death the best way I could, which I believe was learning lessons from him. I'm supposed to. What do you think is the hardest challenge for the average man today? That's a good question. It's a really good question. I think that a lot of people don't understand that it's all of the challenges and struggles that's going to make them, it's either going to make or break them. I read, I don't read studies very often, but I was sent a study about stress from somebody. It's probably the best study I ever read. And it's talked about the placebo effect of stress. And it said that there, they took some of the most stressed people in the world, CEOs, etc., And the ones who believed that stress was really bad for them were dying earlier because of the cortisol inside of their blood. And they said stress would be bad for them, they were having heart attacks. But the ones who believed that stress was good for them and it made them perform, I perform under pressure, stress is good for me, they were living longer. So the same drug inside of their blood, how they framed it inside of their mind had different effects on their body. So from that point onwards, even though I already thought this way, I knew I was the right way. I knew it was the right way to think innately because I've done pretty good in life that way. But this confirmed it. Every time I feel stressed or under pressure, I get excited. I, I, I hate to not be stressed. I wake up and I'm like, everything's fucked. Good. Yes. <laughs> like, that's just how I am, right? But it's it's how you adopt it. It's how you look at the problems and how you use them to fuel you. So the question was, what's the problem for the average man today? What's the biggest problem? I think there's a whole host of problems. But what you have to do is frame it inside of your mind and understand that all of those problems are going to allow you, give you the fuel, the unlimited motivation that you need to become a successful and, and, and beautiful individual if you frame it in the right way. If you take a man and give him a life shielded from problems and he never has any to face, I guarantee you he's terrible at being a man. The best men in the world have gone through shit. That's just, that's why women love scars. They didn't kill you. That's the whole point of it, right? So the best thing you can do as a man is look and go, okay, this is hard, this is hard, this is hard, this is hard. I feel negative because these are all so difficult. I'm struggling with X, Y, Z. Let me internalize all of that and turn it into a superpower. Let me become genuinely uncomfortable with my situation in life and go and fix things. Because like I said, the universe is absolutely or utterly very giving. And if you truly hated being in the position you were in, you wouldn't be there. Well, emotions are feedback. The idea that men don't feel emotions is incorrect. We feel emotions. I would actually argue we feel emotions in, in cert, with certain emotions stronger than women. I would argue that we feel heartbreak stronger than women. I would argue we feel anger like a woman could never understand. I would argue we are extremely emotional. Rage. Rage, pure rage. Well, it's feedback. So when you get the feedback, it's all about how you internalize that and how you process it, right? It's having, stoicism is not, not feeling emotions. It's feeling the emotion and going, okay, why is this happening? How much does this really matter? What's the most intelligent move on the chessboard? I'm not even that good at chess, right? My father was a grandmaster. I'm, I'm like 1800 Evo. I'm okay. I was a, ch a child chess prodigy, but I stopped playing chess professionally when I was like eight. So I'm as good now as I was. In fact, I'm worse now than when I was eight. Because I've never, I've never taken any lessons or anything properly since. Because my mother and father broke up. We moved to England. My dad stayed in America. 
lost my chess coach and England didn't have a chess infrastructure. America had a chess infrastructure in the lower income schools. My dad used to go to the ghetto schools because he was black, go to the black schools and teach them how to play chess. So we had a big infrastructure. You peaked at eight. I peaked at eight, yeah. But um, chess is a fantastic game because in the game of chess, there's no, mis there's no luck. If you lose, no matter how well you played, if you lose, at some point you made a mistake. Mm. Even if it's the most minor mistake, you made a mistake. So you learn to understand that no matter what happens to you, if you lose a scenario, you made a mistake. Maybe it's a tiny one. Maybe it was two years ago, whatever. But you made a mistake and you learn absolute and utter accountability for yourself. And that mentality is extremely powerful to apply to all things in life. The position I'm in now as the most hated man in the world, although I agree and I truly believe it's unfair, I still take complete responsibility for. I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm telling you why it happened when I talk about TikTok and YouTube shorts, but I'm not going to blame them. Absolutely, they're, they're, a, they're a company making money and they're monetizing the best they can, fantastic. All of this is my fault. But the Bugatti on my drive is my fault. And the yacht is my fault, the private jet's my fault. So it's all my fault. So I take the good with the bad. I take all responsibility for absolutely everything, including if a woman leaves me, if a woman stays, if I end up heartbroken, if I end up filled with rage, I take responsibility for that. If something happens to me that makes me enraged. I will take responsibility. Why has this happened to me? Why do I feel this way? How did I end up in this position? Is this healthy in this scenario? And sometimes it is. I've had scenarios in my life where I was prepared to die to protect somebody else and I was enraged and it was healthy. I've also had times where I'm in a room by myself, enraged, <laughs> sitting there going, this is no good for anybody. <laughs> I need to just calm the fuck down. Mm -hmm. So emotions are feedback, but stoicism is the ability to process it. And that's what you need to be le learn as a man. You're never gonna be able to turn them off. You're gonna feel them. You have to learn how to turn, you have to learn how to process them and turn them into a positive. It's energy, it's unlimited energy. I say this all the time. I say that the biggest periods of transformation in my life is when everything was going wrong. When my life was going good, it's, it, I'm not a hedonistic person. I don't do drugs, I don't gamble, I don't do prostitutes. I don't do anything that hedonistic, but I'll certainly go on the yacht with a bunch of women I know and chill and have some vodkas and that kind of thing. When life's smooth, that's, then it's semi-hedonistic, pretty relaxed. But when I make my biggest progress, when I really change who I am and change the world, that's when everything's fucked. When things go wrong or I'm feeling things I don't wanna feel or bad things are happening, that's when I'm like, okay, I, can cur I currently cannot sleep. I've completed the day's tasks. I've tried to go to bed. I can't sleep. More shit has to be done. That's when the amazing things happen in my life. When I was heartbroken, when I was whatever, everyone's been heartbroken, I can't remember a specific example, I hit the gym harder, right? If something goes wrong with your payment processor, that's when you get fucking inventive. That's, that's business, right? That's when you get inventive. So all the bad things that happen to you as a man, if you're stoic, you get to take unlimited energy. Heartbreak is unlimited energy. So is depression, so is rage, so is sadness. All these negative emotions they tell you to, to collapse behind. It's like, people talk like, uh, Bruce Lee says, be like water. And people see that as be fluid and just go with the flow. I disagree. If you're like water, you are, you're necessary for life. You are scary when you're enraged. You're powerful. You're beautiful when you're calm. You're, you're so many things when you're like water, right? So if I'm enraged, it's like water behind a dam. You just gotta put the dam in, for, in place and you gotta get the turbo, the hydroelectrics put in. Don't tsunami your life. You can put the energy somewhere. And this is the most beautiful thing about it because people message me all the time like, oh, but Tate, you don't know how sad I feel. No, incorrect. I know exactly how sad you feel. The difference is I used it. And you're sitting here still crying to some random guy on email for the fucking third month in a row. That's the difference between you and me, my friend. I was becoming a world champion kickboxer. I got to a point into it. I, I, people all, often talk to me about depression and say I don't understand it. I will say, listen, there's been times in my life where I was fully functional as an adult. I would never label myself depressed because I don't believe in the idea of labeling myself in the negative because I don't believe in things that take power from me, which we'll talk about in a second. But there's been times in my life where I didn't give a fuck if I lived to die. There were times in my life where I went to fight a man for money and I didn't give a shit if I, if I, if I lost and even woke up again. Didn't give a fuck. I had nothing worth living for. I was brokey, didn't have a girlfriend, didn't have any fucking money. Got a two day call to fight some world champion. Had to lose 10 kilos in two days. Had nothing else going for me. Got on a plane to Dagestan and fucking won. There have been times I've done that. By all conventional wisdom, I was depressed. I was suicidal, didn't I? But I was just like, no, I don't give a shit. That, that's, and that's when I was at my most powerful. Now if I get that call, I'm like, bro, I got a new car outside and shit. <laughs> I'm not going to Dagestan, really, bro. Wait, going to where? <laughs> Sorry, how much money? Nah. But back then I was like, yeah, cool. 
Who is he? Oh, this guy. All right, fine. I didn't, I didn't give a fuck. I was most powerful when I was sad, when I was depressed, when all these things. Mm -hmm. and, and the difference is, was the framing. 